Hey guys, today we're going to take a look at writing your own Node Package Manager, or I'm sorry, Node uh, Console application. Uh, then we're going to look at publishing that console application to the Node Package Manager registry. Uh, so I've been wanting to write a console application for Node for uh, philtext.com, which is another website that I work on. If you've watched any of my previous videos, I'm sure you've heard me talk about it or seen me working on it or working with it or whatever. Anyway, so I figured that's a good place to start. All right, so I'm going to create a directory here. Whoops, I'm going to create a directory called filtext. I'm sorry, I'm going to create a directory called filtext. <laughs> and then I'm going to CD into that. And then uh, let's just clear this out for a second. I'm going to use Node Package Manager to install a couple things I'm going to use in the console application. Uh, so I'm going to install something called requests, which allows us to make uh, HTTP request and then uh, Optimus, which is really cool, and I'll show you what it does in just a second. Or while this is going, I'll tell you it, it parses out all arguments passed to your script for you, turns it into basically a JSON object. Uh, so let's create a new item really quick called filtext.js. And uh, because I know uh, new package manager is going to want me to do it, I'm going to create a readme.md. And then let's load this up in our text editor. Okay, so I'm gonna jump right into our application. Uh, so right off the bat, we're gonna use those dependencies we injected, or that we uh, installed, the two modules that we installed. So request was one of them. That's gonna be require uh, request. Then the other one was uh, optimist require Optimist, and we're also going to use the file system because I, the idea is you're going to be able to call filtext.com with some parameters and then save it to a file, save the response to a file. So it's going to be require the file system, and then uh, and then we're going to have one more here. Let's say var, or you know what? Let's do it this way, and then down here var URL, just so we don't have to type this a bunch. It's going to be filtext.com. Okay, so uh, right off the bat, uh, I, I want this to be set up so you could call the script, you could pass in an input, which is going to be like your rows equals 10, whatever. Uh, if, if you're not familiar with filtext.com and its API, just go to filtext.com and check it out. And then the next option is going to be an output, so taco, and then the name of a file you might want to save all that data to. Uh, so uh, using Optimist, uh, we can kind of skip a lot of that having to parse out and find uh, you know, the I value and the O value. Uh, so what we can do is we can say var args equals optimist.argv. So normally you would call process.argv to get those arguments. Uh, but what's really cool is this takes it and now we, we can just call these. So let's say var input equals args. Uh, no, sorry. Oops. Uh, so the input is the I one. And the output, output is O. Uh, and that's exactly how this works. So it'll basically take this and turn the rows equals 10 into a variable or a key in the JSON called I and uh, data.json into a key called O. So, uh, so the output parameter is going to be optional. If you don't have it, we're just going to console.log the response. Uh, so we'll say if input. So you definitely have to have the input. Uh, we'll do, you know, cool stuff here. Uh, else, we will tell them uh, console.log, hey, you need some input. All right, so, uh, so if we have the input, then we can do our request. So that works like this, request.git, uh, sorry, so our URL that we already created up there plus we're gonna tack on a question mark, plus our input, and then that has a callback, which takes an error and the response. So if there's an error, we'll just throw the error. Uh, otherwise we will cancel, no, you know what, actually, so now we need to see if we have an input option, so, uh, or output option, so if, let's say, if uh, output, uh, now we'll use the file system. So how does that work? Let's see. FS dot 
destroyed file and then we need the file name and then we need the content so that's going to be the response.body and then that takes another callback and that takes an error and it takes something else i don't remember what that is i'll call it d for now and uh, if there's an error we will throw the error otherwise we will console.log uh, save the data to output okay now if there wasn't a uh, output option we'll just log it to the screen so console.log uh, response.body now I wrote that up pretty quick let's just take a look at it for a second uh, so if there's an error it does that yeah you know what it looks good to me uh, I think we're good to go let's just try this out really quick so node fill text.js tag i is rows equals 10 so we're expecting 10 empty objects let's see if this works cool that works uh, let's try it with a couple other options now uh, now when we run this straight through node I'm not going to have to uh, escape the ampersand in Windows and in uh, any other environment you're not going to have to worry about this but later I'll take a look at it and I'll show you where we have to uh, escape that ampersand but let's just say f name equals first name ah shoot get this back here and we'll say and pretty equals true and you know what I'm gonna limit this to five rows let's just try that out really quick cool that worked and then the only other option is O. Oh, so data.json so we're gonna output this to data.json and cool that worked it, it generated that file for us so we're looking pretty good now there's a couple more things we need to do before we can, uh, 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 you know, make this a full-on available in any environment uh, service or our uh, uh, console application. So the first one is let's start our npm init. This is going to create a package JSON file for us. So npm init, and uh, so the name of the file is fill text. I'm fine with that. The version is going to be 0 .0 0 0.0.1. Fine with that. Uh, entry point is fill text JS. Test command, I don't care about that. Repository, keywords, author, Joe, I don't know, that's important. And uh, so that's all good. So let's take a look at this in here. And I'm going to change this description really quick to uh, generate data from fill text to console or file. Uh, that's pretty good. Now, one thing I am going to add here is called a bin, it's a bin, and that takes in an object. And that object uh, is like a shortcut to your file. So fill text is going to run fill text.js. Uh, sorry, not a bun, a bin. So that's good. Uh, I don't care about this. Uh, I think we're looking pretty good. We got our, oh, we never put anything in our readme. So fill text. Uh, you know what, that's good for now. I'm not really worried about it just a second, but certainly you should write a good readme file so people know how to use it. Uh, okay, this is all looking good. Now there is one more thing we're gonna add here uh, because if I try to run this right now, if I try to use what's called the linking function so that I can test it out locally, it's gonna fail on me. And the reason is because when you install a node package, that's a console application at least, um, for Windows, it creates a CMD file, and for uh, a Unix-based system, it creates a shell script, um, and it needs to know how to run those. And basically, for either environment, it's running node, space, your command, and then your options. And if you don't tell it about the environment, it can't run them. Uh, so the way we do that is we do a hash bang slash user slash bin slash env and then space node. Uh, sorry, that should be bin. And so, so that's going to work. That's going to make it so that uh, whether this is a Unix system or a Windows system, it knows how to run it. Uh, so the way we can test this out is uh, npm link. So as soon as I do that, it acts as though I've globally installed this, uh, you know, straight from the npm uh, registry. So let me run that. And then, uh, so it gives me a little information here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to CD out of that directory. So I'm no longer in my project directory. But now uh, I can say... Uh, let's see, so my input is rows 
equals 10. Beautiful, that worked. And if I wanted to, so in Windows, now we actually have to escape the ampersand because it's going to run through a command line processor and it gets all screwy. It's a big pain in the ass, but you have to escape it. Uh, so if I want to say, let's say pretty equals true, and then output that to data.json, uh, it's going to say it's been saved. And then if I want to go look at that, data.json, I can see it's there. And just to show you really quick, I'll load up a git bash. Uh, so again, I'm in this totally different directory. I can say fill text, uh, input rows equals 10, and it'll work there too. And this is exactly how we want it to work when somebody installs this globally, uh, which actually I think there's, uh, you know what? I don't know if I have anything on it here. There's actually an option in here and I don't know if we need it, but I'm gonna add it anyways. There's a key that you can put in here called prefer global and you can just pass in true. I don't know exactly what that does, but the idea is like we prefer this be installed globally uh, and that's good enough for me. Okay, so uh, we can see that works in both environments, both types of uh, commands or terminals. Let me see you back into this and uh, now I'm gonna unlink it. So npm unlink tag fill text is how we do that. Uh, so it will unlink that and now uh, let me go back here really quick and just show you fill text. Nothing there, it didn't work, so that's good. It's no longer installed. And uh, one other thing, we never really tried this out, so fill text with no options. Or, I'm sorry, it should be JS in this case. Or no, that's fine, so hey, you need some input. It just ran that for us, so awesome. Okay, so let's clear this out. Now, the next thing we can do is we can, so, so our application is basically ready to go, and if we wanted to share it with the world, we can just add it to the Node Package Manager registry. If you've never registered, you just do npm add user. And what's going to happen is it's going to come up. It's going to ask you for a username. It's going to ask you for an email address. And then it's going to ask you to do a, create a password. Um, I've obviously already registered, so uh, I don't have to do that right now. But, you know, if, if, you, if you want to join as a, some, if you just want the right, the ability to upload, you just do npm add user. And then, uh, so now I think we're good to go. So the way we publish this is npm publish. And that, I mean, that's really it. That, that's going to put it out to the world to be installed by anybody who wants to use it. And I'll be honest with you, I didn't do a lot of error handling on this. There's all sorts of things that can go wrong, so I'm probably going to walk you through how to unpublish as well. Uh, but once this is published, it's going pretty slow here. Uh, if this takes much longer, I will, uh, you know, fast forward through it or whatever. Uh, it looks like it's moving along. Waiting and uh, uh you know it's it's making some progress here this is fine show you some real time uh i've been having some some minor network issues so hopefully it's not slowing anything down uh you know what i'm gonna go and pause this and wait for it to get done all right so i finished up um so let's see the out of this and uh now what's really cool is we can so i can just install my own application so i can say install fill text tac g it will go out to the node package manager registry and uh, get my application for me, which is cool. You know, not only, you know, can I share it with the world, I can get to it anytime I want. Uh, so we'll give that just a moment. Seems to be taking a second here. And uh, we are just about done, I think. And uh, hmm, it's kind of hosed up on me. I think it finished. We'll give it one more second here. Okay, we're all done. So here I am. I obviously unlinked my application from my local one. So when I call fill text now, I am uh, using the one that I just got. So rows equals 10. There we go, that works. If I wanna output it to data.json. I can take a look at that file. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, so. Now let's unpublish this. I, like I said, there's a lot of work that needs to be done on this. I do fully intend to publish this at a later date, but right now I want to unpublish it. So what I can say is uh, unpublish. Now again, I went back into the directory of my project or my project directory. And one thing you have to pass in, and you know what, I'll try it without it really quick. NPM unpublish. It's gonna come back and say, boy, you need to put on that force. 
And uh, so there you go. Since I'm, I hope you know what you're doing. Uh, double check that one more time. Uh, so it hasn't unpublished yet because I can see it's still doing it. But if I wait a little while, it's going to come back and say, I don't even know what you're talking about. Now we'll give that a little time. But essentially, once it's fully updated, it will uh, it no longer will exist or be available for people to uh, download. So eventually it'll get there. It'll unpublish that. And, uh, and then, like I said, I can go back and publish it when I'm all set. Okay, so that is how to write a node console application how to prepare it for publishing to the node public uh, node package manager registry how to uh, add yourself to the registry how to add that application to the registry and then again how to remove it we'll check this one more time that's ah, still there well it'll go away it's it's obviously removing that from from the directory uh, I'm not gonna wait on it right now so there you go hope you guys enjoyed it have a good one